This program is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public. Hello, my name is Linda Coates. I'm executive director of the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony, and I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's concert of the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony Orchestra. You know, every year we really look forward to performing uh, these young people's concerts, which is an opportunity for us to play great music for you, and also to introduce you to the instruments of the orchestra. Today's conductor is Jane Lindy Capistran. Enjoy the concert and help me welcome the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony Orchestra.
Thank you. Thank you so very much. And welcome to our program this afternoon. We are very excited that you're here. We would like you to meet the orchestra. And to do that, we're going to play some really wonderful classical music pieces. Raise your hand if you've heard that term, classical music, before. Great. Great. A lot of you have heard that. Do you know that sometimes we think about classical music and you might think, oh, it's boring. Oh, it's kind of stuffy. But that piece that you just heard, which sounded sort of like a barn dance, is classical music. And it was written by an American composer, Aaron Copland. It's called the Hoedown from Rodeo or Rodeo. So today we're going to use other classical pieces so that you can meet all the different instruments in the family. And the first piece that we're going to do is going to introduce you to the string family. There are all of these folks sitting on the floor here next to me. This is the largest family in the orchestra. And we're going to do a piece written by Beethoven that comes from his Ninth Symphony. And it's a very famous melody called Ode to Joy. So I'm going to start with our violin section so that you can hear them. The violin is the highest and the smallest of the string family. They're going to play a little snippet of Beethoven for you. That's the sound of the violin. Now the viola is sort of a, the cousin to the violin. It's held the same way, but it's a lower sounding instrument. So listen to the violas. Now the cello is even lower than the viola, and notice they have to sit when they play their instruments. And finally, sort of the grandfather of the string section is the string bass. They're sitting on stools, and they're the lowest. Now, we're going to put all of these string instruments together, and you'll hear this famous melody, Ode to Joy, in the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven.
We're going to go next to our woodwind section. And this section has many different instruments. We're going to start with one of the highest instruments, and that is the flute. And we're going to demonstrate these woodwinds in a piece written by Tchaikovsky. It's from Swan Lake, which was a wonderful ballet that he wrote. And this is the little dance of the swans. So I'm going to first ask our principal flutist, Deb Harris, to play the melody of this piece. That was our melody. Now the next flutist is going to join in and we'll have harmony added to that melody. Neat. Now there's one other little instrument in the flute family. It's called the piccolo. And in this piece, it only has two little notes at the very end. So you'll have to listen and watch for that. Listen to the piccolo. Ah, nice and high. <laughs> All right, we're now going to go to the oboe family. And this is a double reed instrument. So it's two little pieces of wood that they have to blow through in order to make their sound. Listen to this melody. Now we're going to add harmony with the other oboe. Now there's one other instrument in this family. We call it the English horn. And although it's not used in this piece, you'll hear it in some other pieces, I'm going to ask you to listen to this sound of the English horn. That's also a piece by Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Juliet. Now let's go to the clarinet. That woodwind instrument is just what we call a single reed instrument. They just have one little piece of wood that they blow through. And listen to the clarinets play the melody. There's even another clarinet that has a lower pitch. It sounds the bass clarinet. Listen to this. Now we're going to go to the bassoons. They're the tall instruments that are in the back of the orchestra there. And in the Tchaikovsky piece, they add a wonderful rhythm to the piece. So I want you to listen to the first bassoon playing this. Later on, both bassoons get to play it. Listen to this. Now, in this piece, you're going to hear some of the violins play the melody as well. And other instruments are going to be adding rhythm. So we hope you enjoy this little dance of Tchaikovsky, Dance of the Swans.
The next family we're going to go to is the Brass family. And we're going to use a very special piece written by Franz von Suppe called the Light Cavalry Overture. This was actually an overture that he wrote to an opera. And a cavalry is, of course, a, a military unit that rides on horseback. He really wasn't writing it about that. He was sort of writing about a, a dance troupe that had that same name to it. But it, it tells a story, and we're going to hear different parts of the story in the brass instruments. It opens up with the horns, and they're playing sort of a fanfare at the beginning of the piece. of the piece, it's sort of like we hear the horses galloping, and the trumpets have this little melody. Maybe you've heard that in some cartoons before. We're going to go now to the trombone section, and they have this triumphant ending. Listen to their sound. And there's another low brass instrument called the tuba. Although the composer doesn't use it in this piece, I want you to listen to the sound of the tuba by Mr. Neal. <laughs> that is a low sound, isn't it? Great. So, Although you won't hear it in this piece, listen for the rest of it. Now, this is a longer piece, and you're going to hear different sections of the piece. Um, what happens sort of right in the middle is that there's a cadenza. And a cadenza means that everybody in the orchestra stops except for one instrument. So you're going to be hearing a clarinet cadenza right in the middle. So listen carefully for all the brass instruments and all the parts of the Light Cavalry Overture. Thank you. 
Great. Hope you enjoyed that one. We're now having to introduce one more section of the orchestra, and this is the percussion section. Now, there are two instruments in the percussion section that maybe you don't really think are in the percussion section, but in the orchestra we call them that. And the first one would be the piano. And the second would be the harp. Isn't that nice? All right, now we have many kinds of drums in the percussion section. And the first one is a very special type of drum. It's the timpani, or sometimes the kettle drum. It's what we call a pitch drum, and that is it can change the sound or the tone of its pitch. So listen to Dr. Eiler play the timpani. Now we have other drums too. If we look over on this side of the orchestra, we have the snare drum. the bass drum. We also have cymbals, and we can either use mallets and strike the cymbal, suspended cymbal, or we can crash them together, crash cymbals. Now these are just a few of the instruments in the percussion family. And the next piece that we're going to play will feature many more. The next piece is called Danza Cubanis. And it's three Latin American dances. You're going to hear, first of all, a conga, a salsa, and then a mambo. And lots of times when players are playing the mambo, they want to shout that word out. So we're going to invite you to join us in shouting that word out at the end of the piece. And while you're listening, make sure that you check out all the different percussion instruments that are going to be happening over in this side of the orchestra. Danza Cubanas.
audience, that was very good, very good. Did you notice that you were hearing some different solos through that and even a cadenza? We heard the trombone, a flute cadenza, and then the trumpet solo. And of course, all those percussion instruments. Now we've talked about all the families of the instruments, but we've left out one, one item of the orchestra. Does anybody know what we've left out, who we've left out? Can you shout it out to me? All right. Thank you. I think I heard it. The conductor. Yes. The conductor. That's my job. And one of the important jobs of the conductor is, of course, to help the orchestra stay together by giving them a beat. So right now, I'm going to show you a beat pattern. That's what I do when I conduct the orchestra. And you're all going to get to conduct with me. And we're going to do a piece that maybe you didn't know when you were just born that you were listening to classical music. But this is the Brahms lullaby. And it's a very beautiful piece, and it's in three. So I'm going to ask you all right now to raise your right hand in the air. I'll use my left. And we're going to start here at the top, and we're going to go down for beat one. We're going to go out for beat two, and then back up for beat three. Beautiful. Let's do it together. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Excellent. So as we play the Brahms lullaby today, I want you to copy me and conduct along. And it's a very soothing, quiet piece. We just don't want you to fall asleep. Thank you, audience. I could see some lovely conducting out there. Maybe someday one of you will want to be a conductor. Now, orchestras play much classical music, but they also do other types of music. And one way that maybe you've heard orchestras is when you hear a movie, they play the, the music that goes behind that. We call it a film track or a soundtrack or a film score. And so today we're going to play two movements of a wonderful movie theme, and I think you're going to recognize it when you hear it.
audience, can you tell me what movie that came from? Yes, good for you. And we have one final piece to play for you today. It's a wonderful classical piece written by a Russian composer, Rimsky-Korsakov. But he's entitled it Capriccio Espanol. He got this inspiration from Spain. And so you'll hear some sort of images of that when you hear these movements. There's wonderful cadenzas played by all the various families of instruments that you've heard and a very big ending. So thank you once again for coming to our concert. And here's our final movements of Capriccio Espanol.
This program is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.